we're really trained to think about ill to the pill. So, you know, we went to a phase in cardiology where we said, I'll give everybody Xanax. What I love about heart math personally is it transforms how you see the world. It's not just a technique to, you know, to stabilize the autonomic nervous system. It really changes the lens through which you see. And that to me is fundamentally important. Hi, everyone. I'm Deborah Rosman, and a warm welcome to our listeners. Each month for the Ad Heart podcast, I have the privilege of interviewing individuals who are contributing to the creation of a more heart based world. This month, I'm talking with the world renowned cardiologist, founder of the Academy of Integrative Health and Medicine, and author of the seminal book, The Heart Speaks. Dr. Mimi Garneri founded the Scripps Center for Integrative Medicine and served as medical director for 15 years, where state-of-the-art cardiac imaging technology and lifestyle change programs were used to diagnose, prevent, and treat cardiovascular disease. She received the Bravewell Leadership Award, which honors a physician leader who's made significant contributions to the transformation of the U.S. healthcare system. Welcome, Mimi. So great to be here. Thank you. This is such a great podcast. I'm thrilled to be on it. Well, we're so glad you're here. You know, in your book, The Heart Speaks, you share groundbreaking research that the heart is a complex organ possessing intelligence, memory, decision-making abilities independent from the mind, which is what HeartMath Research discovered, too. And that healing the heart can have more to do with healing the mind and soul, you say, than we ever knew. Of course, HeartMath has developed methods to access this intelligence of the heart, but I'd like to know what inspired you to write this book. Well, thank you for that question. Uh, the book was actually my journal. The Heart Speaks was never intended to be a book. Uh, for those who aren't familiar with it, it's really a book of stories. Uh, that talks about things that affect the human heart way beyond cholesterol and blood pressure. Not that those aren't important, because they are, uh, but really looking at some of the deeper issues, grief, emotion, stress, loneliness, and so on, which unfortunately get marginalized uh, in cardiology. Mm. You know, you and I talked about, based on this research, and our own personal hearts, intelligence, yours through the book and your own discoveries of mine, that the world really needs a revolution of love. Tell us how you came to this from a cardiologist's point of view. It's been an interesting journey because I'm very conventionally trained. And in 1994, I moved from New York City to San Diego to be at Scripps Clinic, really to work as an interventional cardiologist. So that meant I was placing, you know, over 700 stents a year in people's hearts, a very mechanical fix. Uh, but then I had a great opportunity. I was asked by Dean Ornish to conduct some research with those patients that were not stentable, quite frankly. You know, it was the days when the stents were new, technology was new. And there were a lot of people that are actually told, you know, sort of go home and get your affairs in order, which is hard to believe. And so we began uh, teaching yoga and meditation, vegetarian diet, food support, exercise to these really sick heart patients. And I was just amazed as a card carrying conventional cardiologist, how people's lives were transformed. And not only what their lives transformed, but the lives of their family, because when you have a sick family member, right, everyone is affected by that. So, uh, one of the things that it was all new to me, right? But really looking at the mind-body connection, hearing people talk about loss, people talking about grief, talking about stress. Uh, I remember one man saying, I was, you know, my cancer was in remission. And then I was so stressed out that I started getting chest pain and my lymphoma came back. You know, and as a, I started to perk up and say, let me look at the literature around all of this, which is profound, by the way. 
You know, why do not more cardiologists care about all this? Or It's obvious that stress affects the cardiovascular system. Do they know that? In you know, I think they know it, right? But you have to say when you have a 10 minute or a 15 minute, if you're lucky, 20 minute appointment, what do you? What are the easiest things to do? You say, take this blood pressure pill, take this cholesterol pill, take this diabetes pill, you know, I'll see you in three months or whatever. But when you start to talk to people about their lives, both the richness of their lives and the challenge of their lives and what's actually going on in their life, uh, you open up what uh, physicians for years have called Pandora's box. And when you open Pandora's box, you can't do it in a 15-minute appointment, right. right? And we're really trained to think about ill to the pill. So, you know, we went through a phase in cardiology where we said, oh, give everybody Xanax. It's a very different breed of physician who can take the time and say, okay, let's get you trained in heart math. Let's get you trained in meditation. This is what it can do to transform your stress response. And not only that, what I love about heart math personally is it transforms how you see the world, right? It's not just a technique to, you know, to stabilize the autonomic nervous system. It really changes the lens through which you see. And that to me is fundamentally important. Absolutely. I mean, I've given so many talks to doctors as well as, you know, business people who need to understand how the heart rhythm responds to stress and emotions. And that when we let rage and frustration and overwhelm and patients just lead us throughout the day, which many do, they go one overwhelmed to the next, it just increases disorder in the autonomic nervous system, the heart's rhythm, whereas if we can pause and use a technique like a heart math technique or anything else that helps us neutralize that, come back to inner balance, and then pause and have a moment of emotions like gratitude or appreciation or love, that heart rhythm moves right away into this smooth, coherent waveform, which signals the brain, which creates harmony between the heart and brain, and that rhythm set by the heart is capable of entraining the other organs to oscillate in synchronicity, like the pendulum of clock. So how do we reach more, co- you know this, how do we reach more cardiologists and other doctors? Because it's so important that they understand. How- I, I think, you know, I spent a good 20 years of my life trying to convince my colleagues to think differently. Hmm. There are some that are ready to come along. They see it. They know it. And then there are some that say, yeah, we know stress is bad for the heart, so we'll give a beta blocker and we'll block the adrenaline, right? I think we as human beings need um, need to take responsibility for our health, right? And let's keep people out of the healthcare system, quite frankly. And I think if we take these techniques and we put them in the hands of our community, then people will start to get well without necessarily the need to get the approval of a physician, quite frankly, uh, to be doing this. It's like you don't need a physician to give you permission to eat organic blueberries uh, or to go take a meditation class. But we need to empower people right, to look at their lives differently, to, uh, to take that pause and say, hey, what's working for me? What's not working for me? And how can I change something? You know, it's easy to say, okay, I'm not exercising. I'm going to walk every day. Okay, great. Or I'm not eating right. I'm going to, I'm going to start to make changes in my diet. Really important. Uh, but I can tell you, if you can get your nervous system under control, everything else falls into place. I, that to me is really the first step. So... I've heard that from psychiatrists, from a lot of the healthcare professionals who come to HeartMath say, the key right now when people have tried everything else is to understand they have a dysregulated nervous system from the accumulation of stress. And it's not just cortisol and they take an anti-cortisol pill. I've heard that too, (laughs) that they really need to reboot their nervous system. How do you, you teach that? How do you... Apply that in your practice, cardiology. 
because I'm a cardiologist, people know my background and those that come to see me, if I uh, tell them, you know, I really want you to get a heart map, download the app, get, get the device, start to practice, they hear that because it's coming from a cardiologist, right? People are very smart and most people know that stress is making them sick. Yeah. Most people know that their anger is not good for their health. And so the, the benefit of getting control of the autonomic nervous system uh, and also changing the way one thinks, right? So how do you evoke those feelings of love, feelings of compassion, uh, feelings that bring joy as opposed to the negativity, right? Right. So, like, like I love some of the heart math. You know I'm a heart math instructor. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, like just teaching people to recognize where they are in their emotions. Take a pause. Take a step to get you in the other direction if you're angry. Take that pause. Breathe. You know, I think we should, I think we really do need um, to activate the heart of humanity. You know, I really believe that. We all have a heart. Yep. I believe people are all inherently good. I believe we live in a culture that's extremely stressful right now. Yeah. Right? Uh, and I really think that if we all do our bit to practice, to be kinder, to be more gentle, to be more accepting, uh, it's going to be a better world. And I, what I love about HeartMath is HeartMath has the research to support everything I'm saying. So there's no cardiologist out there who could say, oh, that cardiologist is crazy, right? She's, right. you know, we know stress kills people. We know stress raises blood pressure, causes congestive heart failure, causes arrhythmia, causes diabetes, causes osteoporosis, causes cognitive decline. We know all of this. Headaches, muscle spasm, we know this. So if we know this, right, how do we say, okay, I'm going to put the brakes on this, right? Right, I'm going to take that pause. If nothing else, I'm going to take that deep breath, and then I'm going to look at my life and say, "What can I do?" And the the beauty of the heart math techniques is, there's a while, and you know this, you may not need a device anymore. You can do it without a device. You know, you can you really learn to do this by self regulation of your own body, right. and every human being is capable. Yeah, I agree. That's one reason we developed the new HeartMath app where they could see their heart rhythm with the camera, the, uh, using the camera on their smartphone as a sensor. And that's just opened the eyes of so many people who weren't ready to spend money on a device. But everybody's got a smartphone and or just about throughout the planet. There's billions of them. And I think that's how we will help activate the heart of humanity when people really see that as they change the frustration through a simple technique, takes less than a minute of heart-focused breathing and finding something in their life to feel grateful for and seeing what that does to their heart rhythm. That's the wow moment. Like, I did that. I really can control that. It's possible. It's not just foo-foo or imagination. That's, that's what my heart's passion is, to help people have that discovery so that they're then motivated to do that more. Exactly. And you and I both know from heart map research that if I'm doing it and you're doing it and we're in the room with someone who maybe doesn't even know what this is, all of a sudden they're going to feel a different a uh, different way as well because we're going to bring that that coherence to them. Uh, and that it's fascinating. So I think we should think about doing a um, like a 10 million strong. Let's just throw out a number. A people committed to practicing, right? The heart math technique, give it a little bit of time every day uh, and watch and see what happens around us because we know that it transforms the room. We know that it people fight less. We know that people feel less anxious, less frustrated, less likely to say something they're going to regret. So your relationships get better at home with your family, uh, at work, and so on. 
um, and imagine what it would do for the world. Oh, yeah. You know, most people don't realize it's not something psychic. That the heart, with every heartbeat, is producing electromagnetic field. It's a power generator. And that field is like a radio transmitter transmitting how we feel. Kids call it my vibes. you got good vibes or bad vibes. But we pick that up from each other. It's a real transmission, just like cell phones, just like a radio. And that's how we can affect others. And we know when we're really stressed out, we're affecting our children, we're affecting our relationships. When we learn how to get in this state of heart rhythm, harmony, coherence, we call it, that affects our environment too, which is what you're talking about. And you know, maybe people kind of know it's about love. All the poetry and the songs about love and everybody wants it. Not the squishy or sentimental love, but the real, that real power of love, deepening connection of that makes us feel we're alive and who we really are. Everyone wants there. And there's an intelligence to love that we need people to understand so love can go viral, not just give it lip service. So you talked about, let's do a revolution of love. Give us your vision. How do you see that happening? Well, you know, what I would love to see is that we all just pick a time or just do it throughout the day where we learn the heart math technique and we just lock in for a few minutes a couple of times a day and when we're in our, what I like to call our sacred space, uh, we just transmit love, compassion to the world. Mm. We're talking right now about a planet which uh, which is deeply suffering, right? We have every ma- everything from wildfires to floods to tornadoes. I mean, the list goes on and on and more and more people being displaced to the point where I think we're going to have climate refugees. I really believe that. Uh, it's already happening. Uh, and now the talk at the Vatican, you know, with Pope Francis, with Dr. Ramanathan, who's one of the leading scientists on climate change, uh, with some of the work happening at UCSD, um, everyone is talking about resiliency. How mm-hmm. do we improve human resiliency so that we as a species, quite frankly, can survive? And we're not going uh, to have resiliency if we're fragmented, if we're frustrated, if we're anxious, if we're in pain. We have to improve the resiliency of our communities. And this heart math is a beautiful technique uh, for taking us. It increases our emotional intelligence, right? Mm -hmm. You know, when when crisis hits, you can say, I'm going to go and steal the TV from Walmart, or I'm going to go with you know, see how I can help my neighbors, right? What's the response? How do we want to be, um, how do we want to be as human beings on this planet? And uh, I really believe that if we can get enough people, we can transform uh, the consciousness level, raise the consciousness level to one of love, to one of uh, compassion, to one of tolerance, uh, all the things that are so desperately needed, right? Well, I couldn't agree with you more. So many people, like National Geographic just brought a whole article, special thing on stress in this issue and how today's stress is different because we connected. I mean, we're all hearing everybody's stress story constantly and the media amps that up and people are like adapted to it. That's a survival mode. It's just the way it is. And when that happens, then your own sense of conscience and inner dignity starts to get numb. And you end up, like you said, so many people are are doing things like, um, you know, silly robbing stores. I mean, that's always been. But when you lose connection, you lose conscience, you lose your humanity. And And so... You lose hope, right? You lose, you you have, then it's all fear-based. Yes. So what, right? So it's fear-based, all that behavior. So if you can transform fear into love, then we're going to change everything. And because the reality is we have enough on our planet for everyone. We can take care of everyone, but we have to make that choice to do it. Now, 
each and every one of us has an opportunity to be something different, to do something different. And again, I think we just need a path to get us there. Right. And the beauty of Heart Math is it gives us a path. It might not be everybody's path. I wish it was. Great. But as long as you have a path to inner peace, and in that inner peace, you you find yourself a, I'll say, a better human, right? A uh, Someone who feels good about who they are, what they do. Uh, and we all have our moments, but let's hope they're good moments. That's right. You know, if what well, we've discovered, if even a small percentage of us, like you were saying, commit to putting love into action in our own lives, which is a practice of going back to the heart when we get triggered, we get out of the heart, we get back in when we feel stress, and then interweave qualities of the heart, like compassionate understanding or deep listening or gratitude or kindness or just calmness into our next interactions, we start to change our baseline heart rhythm. You know, that's the science that HeartMath Institute is researching. What's involved in changing your personal and global social baseline? Because that's where the rubber meets the road. So if we realize that warmth of kindness, deep listening, compassionate care, forgiveness is what creates heart rhythm coherence and can shift our baseline, raise our vibration above it all, then we can make more heart intelligent choices and help activate ourselves and the humanity in a higher place, whereas love is the missing piece. Everybody says it, but we individually have to practice it and collectively step into it. Well, I think anyone who is listening to this podcast has been in an experience where they've walked into a room and they said, oh, there's something bad happened. Yeah. <laughs> we always say, oh, boy. The bad energy, bad vibes, whatever, right? That's what you were talking about earlier. Yeah. We also have all been in the experience of saying something we regret, right? We get right. upset, somebody pushes our button, we say it, it's out of our mouths, and we think, oh my God, I can't believe I said that. How do we get control, right? And how and what people have to realize is that there is the connections between the heart and the brain, right? The heart is feeding the brain information. As cardiologists for years, we've known that people with panic attacks, you better check them for heart arrhythmia. Mm. Frequently, it's the heart arrhythmia, the heart sensing something's not right, telling the brain, hey, pay attention, something's going on, right? We have that data in cardiology. We also have, of course, as you know, better than most through the heart math data, that we can transform that information that we send up to the brain to either take us from the fight, flight, run, fear, to that compassion, love, um, other response. And that, to me, is uh, the beauty of this. And imagine if we can get a world that hears this and recognizes this, uh, people know it on some level. They know when the room doesn't feel right. They know when the room feels good. They know they say things they regret. They never think about how can I transform that in a second and how can I do it through a practice? Because we're not raised with learning that, right? That's right. And the, the wonderful thing we're seeing is after even a week of practice, five minutes a day. I mean, it gets easier. We start to form a habit, which gives us choice. There's like a bird on, my grandmother called it the little birdie on your shoulder, but we're starting to access through that heart-brain synchronization, a uh, higher intelligence part of ourselves that can prompt us and say, do you really want to press send on that email until you take a pause and read it again? You know, I can't tell you how many times that's bailed me out. You know, just pause and take a break, get some water and go back and read it again. And I go, oh, no, I'm so glad I didn't send that. So it, but again, after a week of practicing just some simple tools like hard focused breathing, you put, you're really putting love into action. That's an act of love, an act of care for yourself and others. 
So I, I'm so inspired by you being so inspired. Uh, you know, it's a beautiful thing because you just said it's an act of care for yourself. So on your side, you're going to improve what's called your heart rate variability. Uh, slow, slow heart rate variability, low heart rate variability. We know in cardiology is linked to sudden death. It's linked to poor cardiac out. So if you can improve your heart rate variability, you can improve your longevity. That's for sure. So now, so you're giving that gift to yourself. Mm -hmm. if you're also giving yourself the opportunity to, to transform how your nervous system is responding, right? The nervous system was designed to save our life, right? Everybody knows this, fight, flight, yeah. uh, get away from the tiger, or you're bleeding and you have to produce stress hormones to support your blood pressure and all of that. But we're living like that 24-7. So if we can pull that off of our bodies, literally, if we can dial down the adrenaline, the cortisol, the norepinephrine, the aldosterone, right? We need these, but we don't need them 24-7 the way we have our foot on the gas pedal all the time. We need to balance this. That's a beautiful gift we're giving our own heart. And then if we can, if we can take that gift and bring it out to the world through... Uh, you know this, when we do a lock-in, we transmit love, we send love, we send peace, we send, you know, we, we're connecting with the world in a different way. And uh, it's incredibly healing to those around us, uh, as well as to ourselves. Absolutely. Well, let's do it together. Let's have a heart meditation on putting love into action, because it's up to each one of us. So... And let's plan on activating the heart of humanity. Let's activate one heart at a time. Let's make it like it's a, you know, a match that goes from flame to flame to flame. All right, to all right I love that. They light up the world. My wildfire. Okay, let's all center in the heart together. Let's do some heart-focused breathing. Just shift from your mind and emotions to the core center of your heart. And as you do this, breathe in love and appreciation for yourself and someone you love and appreciate. This warms our heart and actually increases heart rhythm coherence. Just breathe easily. And imagine with each breath that your mind, emotions, and body are becoming still inside. This helps with focused intention. Next, let's visualize more of humanity connecting with their heart's kindness, love, compassion, and respect in their interactions to help reduce separation and draw in new solutions that serve the greater whole. Know that as the collective heart awakens, this can eventually transform all this civil unrest from separation that's going on and clear the way for people to get along with each other. A first step toward creating a better and more harmonious world.
Now let's send out our love, our inclusive love and compassion to all who are suffering throughout the planet from wars, famine, climate change, and many other hardships. Let's close by radiating and co-creating a reservoir of compassionate heart energy that each of us can tap into as needed over the next month when we feel stress or want more clarity or support from our heart's intelligence. We can create this reservoir that we can access each one of us together. Thank you so much for sharing that, that heart meditation with me. Mimi, is there anything else you'd like to share with our listeners? Well, I just am so glad that everyone listening, I hope, is participating uh, in that last uh, meditation, lock-in. Uh, there's no way you can't feel better after doing that. Mm -hmm. Really love and appreciate your heart and all the beautiful arts around you. Thank you so much for leading us in that. And there's so much great heart math research uh, that I just have to really send a big thank you to Roland, and Doc, and the team because uh, it, it gives us the data we need to uh, talk to our colleagues, talk to people that don't understand this world, and also helps us to heal everyone around us. So thank you. Thank you, Mimi. And I want to provide a free gift to our listeners. You can watch the interactive heart math experience, an online video course that gives some of the basic research and some of the techniques you can use anytime during your day. Or check out the amazing new heart math app at your app store that has the camera sensor and uh, you can download the HeartMath Experience for free from theheartmath.com, or you can go get the HeartMath app at your app store and get it from there. And I also want to remind you that the third Tuesday of every month, we publish a new Ad Heart podcast episode. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss our next guest and topic. Take care, everyone. Lots of love. Thank you for listening to the Ad Heart Podcast. Be sure to subscribe so you can catch the latest episodes. If you're wanting even more heart-inspired content, find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and LinkedIn. Look for HeartMath and also the HeartMath Institute. Both organizations are committed to helping activate the heart of humanity.